Walter Model and Eric von Manstein are two marshals who always occupy the top positions in the ranking of the best Wehrmacht commanders. Both one and the other commanded the main armies of Germany in the most difficult situations of World War II, and their decisions depended on avoiding catastrophic defeats. But, which of the two achieved more victories on the battlefield? Who performed more ingenious maneuvers? Which marshal was more decisive to get the victory, or to lengthen the defeat? I'm sure that if we did a vote on which of them was better, or simply which is the public's favorite, the score would be tremendously tight. So, next, we are going to solve the questions previously raised, in which we will analyze their biggest victories and defeats so that each one can draw their conclusions at the end of this program. To put ourselves in context, the first thing we have to take into account is that they were two men who, although they were taking part in the military actions of this conflict from the very beginning, each of them had their peak at a different time. In the first place, Manstein began to stand out both in the campaign in Poland and in France, due to his contributions in planning these attacks. Subsequently, he commanded a series of units throughout the Barbarossa operation that also made him stand out as a frontline general, in addition to his well-deserved fame as an organizer and planner. It was after his successes in the Siege of Mariupol, in the north of the Azov Sea, when Manstein began to be granted more important commands. It was precisely here that he achieved one of his most important victories after taking the city of Sevastopol, which led to his promotion to Field Marshal. This being his greatest achievement to date, establishing himself in the summer of 1942, Manstein would now go on to occupy the most important commands on the Eastern Front. After a brief stay in Leningrad, he was called to solve the disaster that was taking place in Stalingrad and from that moment on, he carried the greatest weight of the fight on the southeastern front on his shoulders, until he was dismissed at the end of March 1944. From that moment on, it can be said that Walter Model would be the men who would occupy Manstein's position, being continuously transferred to where the situation was most critical. Regarding Model's rise as a prominent unit commander, we have to go back to Operation Barbarossa. In this campaign he was under the orders of Guderian, and was able to stand out as a very capable division general. Model led one of the spearheads over Moscow, although as we already know, this operation ended in failure, and the Germans were forced to withdraw. It was precisely in this withdrawal that Walter Model stood out applying defensive tactics with very good results, which did not go unnoticed in Hitler's headquarters. Thus, this began to attract the attention of the German leader himself, who saw him as a general capable of carrying out his orders to resist, using everything he had at his disposal, instead of looking for excuses to initiate withdrawals. This would cause him to rise and by early 1942, he was given command of the German 9th Army, which was involved in a series of defensive struggles that ended up causing the Rezev salient. Thus, while Paulus's men were sinking at Stalingrad, Model's troops had held their ground in this salient, stopping Soviet troops in their tracks even larger than those that had attacked in Operation Uranus. After a meeting that Model and Hitler himself held after this episode, the German leader himself acknowledged that Model was one of the best generals he had, and that he fully trusted his abilities although he would not like to serve under his orders. In addition, Model was a general who squeezed his subordinates to the maximum and made them exceed any limit. Although his troops held him in high esteem because they considered him a very close general who shared their hardships with them, many officers often asked to be transferred to other places when they found out that Walter Model was going to be sent to his barracks. With this we come to the Citadel operation, in which Germany launched its last major offensive on the Eastern Front, risking everything on this card. For this assault in the summer of 1943, both Model and Manstein were the protagonists, at a time when the scales were tipping very favorably for the Red Army. At this point, in which this operation ended up failing, Manstein would go into decline while defending the banks of the Dnieper River, and Model gradually gained more prominence before the task of continuing to delay the defeat of Germany in the war. It is necessary to indicate here, as we already saw in the special program on Manstein, that the relationship between these two quarterbacks was quite bad and that neither of them could stand each other. In any case, this detail about their relationship is unimportant, 
the relationship that the German leader had with each of them being of more interest. And it is that while the relationship between Manstein and Hitler was also quite bad, Walter Model did enjoy the full confidence of the German leader. Although Model committed suicide a few weeks before the end of the war and could not leave memories of it, giving his version of events, the same is not the case with Manstein. In frustrated victories, Manstein left a fairly complete description of Model, which from my point of view is quite close to the real one. This opinion is as follows. Model was a highly trained staff officer, shrewd, with a clear intelligence and quick understanding. Of medium height, slender rather than stocky, with thick black hair and lively, sometimes piercing eyes, he made a youthful, optimistic impression. Model was tenacious and had a great capacity for work. The outstanding condition of him was an extraordinary energy, if a little ruthless at times. To these conditions he added a great poise and security in his manner and a remarkable decision and firmness in his manifestations. He was clearly an optimist by temperament, for whom the word difficulty had no meaning. Despite the fact that Model carried out actions in order to win Hitler's sympathy and trust, it must be recognized that he had his own ideas in the military sphere and did not hesitate to uphold them with open frankness before Hitler, often reaching risque words. Although he fully embraced and supported Hitler's government, he was by no means one of those military fanatics who accepted every order, from him without question. Model was always a brave soldier, who did not personally avoid any risk and demanded the same of his subordinates. He was somewhat brusque in manner, and he had few manners, but he made up for it by always leading by his own example, which kept her in the critical places on his forehead at all times. He was in a word, a soldier tailored for Hitler. After this description provided by Manstein himself, we now have to look at the last defensive actions on the southeastern front, which ended with Manstein's dismissal, and he was replaced by Model. After continuing with the work that Manstein was doing in that sector for a few months, Model was now transferred to the central sector, to take charge of the great Soviet offensive that was expected in the area for the summer of 1944. With Operation Bagration, we found what in my opinion was the biggest defeat that Model would suffer in World War II, although due to the total imbalance of forces, he could do little to nothing to avoid it. Following this massive offensive, he again succeeded in crippling Soviet troops near Warsaw in a series of fierce counterattacks, which re-established a fixed front. Finally, Model would end his days on the Western Front, succeeding again in his attempt to stop the Allied offensives for months, and also participating in the Battle of the Bulge. He would meet his death by committing suicide in mid-April in the Ruhr pocket itself, when his units, already totally depleted and of little combat value, were surrounded there. Well, having seen the service records of these two quarterbacks, let's now move on to the more specific comparison. It is clear that both marshals knew how to perfectly organize the units under their command, and were masters of both defense and attack. Both Manstein and Model were always sent where the situation was most critical, and they knew how to re-establish the line and manage to counterattack. However, we can find a difference in the way he leads his men. While Manstein was more sophisticated and was more of a map and strategy man, Model was a frontline general who liked to be present among his soldiers. Although Manstein always stood out for his elaborate plans and his ingenuity, Model did it for his determination and his total capacity for improvisation on the field. On the other hand, we have to find the main difference between them not in their way of being or in their way of directing, but we have to fix it for the period in which each one held their most important commands. Whereas Manstein did it during the year of 1942, until the middle of 1944, Model would mainly have it from 1944 after Manstein's replacement. Thus, while Manstein had to face a very difficult situation for the German army, Model from mid-1944, had to face a situation that was already practically impossible for the Third Reich. The fact of only achieving defensive achievements is perhaps what can diminish Model's fame the most, since he does not have great victories and strategic plans like Manstein. In any case, and putting both offensive and defensive successes at the same level, I sincerely believe that both men were practically at a similar level, 
and they always knew how to get out of the most difficult situations, getting the most out of their units. Answering the question about which is your favorite field marshal, I would finally answer that mine is man's time, because he seems to me a more complete and intelligent man than model. But in you, for which of them do you lean more, man's time, or model? I await your answers in the description. If you want more information, we have two programs in which we analyze both the actions of Manstein and model with Antonio Munoz, which I leave in the description.